This is Intro to Cylindrical Motion, or cylindrical, uh, cylindrical Motion 1. And uh, what I'm going to do in this video is just give a brief uh, overview of the equations, and we're just going to hop right into examples. I feel like dynamics, you need to learn from example. That's the only way you can do it. So um, with Cylindrical Coordinate System, uh, we're going to have uh, different coordinates planes now. We're no longer going to be based off of the XY coordinates, but now we're going to be based off of normal and tangent. So what I'm going to do here is draw us a quick little, um, first of all, I'll draw us a circle. And in this circle you'll have a center and you'll have an arrow pointing out, okay? Normal would be, normal direction would be in the direction of um, inward towards the center. So it's actually opposite as the armature, so normal. And then tangent would be the direction, so it could be this way or it could be this way, but from that point um, you could have, it could be either direction based off of the which direction your angular velocity is going. So depending on which way you're going around the circle. So um, in a casing point, uh, just well, let's just pull out the equations real quick. Um, first of all, cylindrical uh, motion is meant to um, allow us to adjust where the center is. So if you have an arbitrary path, say here, you can realize that at, at point A, we would have a centroid that would be somewhere over here, and at point B, you would have a centroid somewhere over here. And you realize that um, cylindrical motion uh, allows us to move that point of reference just so that we can gain an understanding of how the particle is moving. So realize that um, our point of reference is not stationary, um, but we always need to bring it, we always need to true up all of our numbers to um, a relationship, whether it has to do with uh, x and y coordinates or polar or even um, relationships like scalar relationships within the curve itself, such as like speed or acceleration or whatnot. And you'll see that in the example. So uh, first off, let's pull out the equations. V will be uh, theta dot and then your r. And R would be your your armature, your arm length. So uh, basically, the radius of your of your curve at that point. So your radius of that circle that would be created due to that curve. And also, you have a theta dot, which is your angular velocity. And your angular velocity just has to do with uh, that. That could be in terms of uh, radians per second or um, degrees a, a minute. Um, it really, it doesn't matter. Just whatever they are, just realize that you're going to be carrying all that stuff with you. So uh, adjust your your units appropriately. So then we rock into uh, acceleration. So here's our velocity. And here's our acceleration. Okay, acceleration has a somewhat unique relationship. You'll have uh, acceleration at a given point will be v squared over rho, and this is uh, to in the n direction, normal direction plus uh, your velocity, or I mean your uh, acceleration along the path tangential direction. So what is this saying? This is saying your velocity squared right up here and then divide it by what I'm going to call r. This is r. So it's your velocity squared over r and that's going to be uh, somewhat of a pulling force. So if you have a given curve, like what we're going to see in a problem, if you're going uh, 10 miles an hour, or 10 miles, or 10 feet per second, or whatnot, and you have 
you know, a hundred, hundred foot, uh, feet per second, feet per feet. So what you would get is 10 times 10, right? You'd get 10 squared over 100, which is equal to 1 meters a second squared. And all that is, is that saying that we have a normal force. So if there was, um, for that particular uh, particle, you would have an acceleration to the left or towards the center at one meter a second squared. Okay, so that's all I'm trying to gather. And basically V dot is the change in velocity along this path. So if, if this was also accelerating, if it was speeding up in one second, it may be 11, you, you would just add that in. So plus uh, that vector, and then you would do uh, the Pythagorean theorem and determine what the total acceleration is. So you could have one meter this way and then you know your your acceleration tangential in this direction and then you would find some vectorial combination of the two. So anyway, uh, let's just cut this all off here and let's slip right into the problem. What we have here is we'll have uh, basically, if a car is constantly accelerating along this uh, track right here at one meter per second squared, and the total acceleration is three meters per second squared at point B, then what is the speed at point B? Okay, well, I mean, we all you have to do is you say, okay, well, we know the equation for acceleration for cylindrical motion, so let's just put that down first, and then we can pick apart the, uh, the equation. So acceleration at B is V squared over rho, and this is in the normal direction, plus V dot in the tangential, okay? So we know that, first off, we don't know what velocity is. We know what the total acceleration is. We know that that's 3. So that will equal v squared over rho, which is 50. And remember, this is in the normal direction, plus v dot, which is going to be 1 uh, meters per second squared, and that's in the tangential direction. OK, great. So. Now what we can do is uh, we can realize that that, th that this is normal and that we will just uh, backtrack this and do the Pythagorean theorem. So realize that these are all vectors, vector, uh, vector, and vector. And I know this doesn't seem like a vector, but it is. Like the total acceleration, that is a vector. So what we have is uh, when we do the Pythagorean theorem, we'll have... Uh, actually, I'm going to take this over here. It'll be 3 equals, and then we know that it'll equal v squared all over 50, that whole quantity squared, plus 1 squared. And we know that'll equal 3. So when we solve for that, you'll have uh, v squared over 50, this whole quantity squared, plus 1 equals 9, and then v squared over 50 squared equals 8, then you got to take the square root of both sides, so that would be v squared over 50 equals square root of 8, which v squared equals 50 times the square root of 8, which when we do the square root of that, we will find that v will equal 11.89 meters a second. Kind of handy, and uh, I hope you found this useful, and let's just skip on to the next problem.